Welcome back, everybody. This is the Johnny Mayor, and I am continuing with Soul Nomad and the World Eaters. So last time we took out the Lady Shauna, and this time we are going to head into Aztec and meet with Kristoff yet again and tell him what our plans are for this World Eater that is nearby that we've been uh, trying to deal with for a while now. Let's see if maybe he can help us out with that. Thanks to you, we're safe now. Luckily, damage was held to a minimum. Feel free to keep whatever you may have liberated from the thieves. You need it more than I do, I'm sure. Uh, Master Kristoff, I, I have a favor to ask of you. Please, give me the invoice for the Crimson Tear. The what? What's going on, Levin? Why would you speak of such a thing? Crimson Tear? Sounds familiar. You mean you don't know? The Crimson Tear is, uh, well, God, I'm no good with this stuff. Vitaly, help me out. It's a forbidden relic, the physical essence of a dead soul. In other words, a soul's attachment to this world. Hmm. Nobody is supposed to possess them. Touching one is enough to label you a heretic and exile you forever. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Most people shudder if they even hear its name. You understand what it means to be stuck here, locked out of heaven forever? Well, I was guarding a shipment that left here with a crimson tear. A shipment that ended up in... Raid. Levin. That's top secret. If you cannot follow protocol, how can I trust you with such sensitive information? And the rest of you, forget everything you just heard. Understand? Uh-huh. But Master Kristoff... Maybe these guys are sort of strange and don't look real trustworthy, but they're still good people. Please, this might be just what we need to turn things around. Well, what can I say? You've obviously made up your mind already. Hey, what sort of spell did you cast on him? I could use something like that. Hell, I don't know. He's friggin' nuts, forcing his way into one shitstorm after another. <laughs> It's like he has a radar to track down tornadoes of crap to jump into. <laughs> oh, Gig, you have such a unique sense of humor. It seems I have no choice then. Vitaly. Yes? Go get the papers from file 42 on the black shelf. Cuthbert was in charge of that one, I think. Good. You... You're actually going to give them the invoice? What choice do I have? We've cast our lots already. We'll just have to see it through. I hope you can understand my decision. Of course. Wow, thanks. I'm hoping this is the last time you ever ask such an illegal favor of me. Okay, your turn. Tell me what the plan is. I'm about to lose a very valuable customer over this. I'd at least like to know what I'm paying for. Um... I'm not sure what the plan is, actually. So, essentially, you want the kingdom to stop guarding the World Eater. Yeah, that's it. Well, it has been calm for some time now. Perhaps there wouldn't be much danger in leaving it alone for now. And let me fill you in on something. The Crimson Tear is what's keeping me bound to the kid here. It's all that old hag's fault. But what the hell? I'm having fun here! <laughs> hey, now that you mention it, I remember seeing it too. It had such a sad glow. I wondered why Lady Lena would have something like that. But, I'm sure she had a good reason for keeping it. I understand that the jewel is ideal for sealing other souls. <laughs> and think about it. We've got one of the most potent souls ever created right around the corner. Ah, yes, the World Eater. Ah, I see now where this is headed. Me too. The monstrous shadow looming over us does represent untold power, 
as well as vast evil. And to remain afloat in this hectic world, a country like ours does need access to a certain amount of power. So the King of Reed bought the tier. In all likelihood, who but a king would have the resources to acquire such a thing? No doubt his land's taxes have been funneled into its purchase. Even so, the jewel was of only average purity. The cost of a perfect jewel would be astronomical. <laughs> a third-rate piece of junk like that is bound to lead to failure. But I wouldn't really mind if it freaked out and started wrecking shit. <laughs> you haven't formulated your plan yet, have you? I'll give you some time to sit down and get everything in order. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. Take out the world eater, capture its soul. Beyond that, what? Is that so? Well, I suppose that's the only path open to us now. But how will we get in contact with the knights? Um, we were sort of hoping. Ah, you're asking me for yet another favor? <laughs> Why must you be so brutal? Do you know what kind of position this puts me in? Hmm. Still, it's a good plan. I'd like to see how it plays out. Very well. I'll relay the message for you. But that's it. You're cut off. I'll do no more of your dirty work. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Hey, kid! Why do you bother jumping through all these hoops? Just give me control, let me do my thing, and voila, we win! I'm not giving up my body gig. I knew you'd say that. Fine, do it the hard way. So I guess we're trying to use the uh, Nared link to the Raid Knights to try to get a hold of this Crimson Tear. Then we'll defeat the World Eater, then we'll trap its soul and use that power to, I guess, take on the other world eaters? I don't know. But uh, yeah, off screen I did a little bit of rearranging of my parties here because the upcoming battle is one of the most difficult in the game, especially for the time that we're gonna face it at. So you'll notice this is my main party now. But I created a sniping party essentially and that is because we need it to take out the boss-ish character that will be in the next fight. And that's its only goal, is to take out that character. My other two parties, which are Levin and my hero's party, will be taking out the rest of the kind of other enemies that are going on in that fight. Now because of the difficulty level of this fight, I'm actually going to be equipping decors as well to boost up my stats. I haven't mentioned a ton about decors because I haven't really felt the need to use them, but basically they are one-time use abilities. You equip them to your room, they take effect in the next battle that you do, and then they use them up. And you can never use them again. So I'm going to be equipping some particular ones to increase my HP. And also to increase my abilities on shorelines and seas. Because the next battle area is actually an ocean area. With a small kind of isthmus or land area that you have to maneuver through. And all of the enemies are water enemies that are very tough to take on. Now, anything else that would be helpful? Probably this resistance increasing one too. They like to use magic abilities. So I've got HP up, C and Shoreline up, and then Resistant up, and the other decors on my other parties as well. So now that I've saved, let's continue. Nobody here. There's nothing here. It's just empty. Where'd everyone go? There's something in that tree. Hey, it's a letter. It says the rest is up to you, Endor. That's it? Oh, wait, there's also a map to get to the Nerid's place.
Looks like it's not far past the raid shoreline. Jeez! That Waldorf guy is so irresponsible! <laughs> Sorta. But yeah, Endorf has flown the coop. I don't know if he's chasing after Shauna or what exactly is going on, but he leaves us to contact the Nerids, and uh, this is the next battle. We have to take on these uh, water creatures here. Looks pretty easy, doesn't it? There's only two of them, and only one in each party. And there's nothing else going on, so all we have to do is take those two out, and the battle should be over. But, as you might expect, it's not going to be that easy. The battle is set up that you cannot defeat those two enemies before reinforcements show up. And it's those reinforcements that are the dangerous ones. So we are going to save our arching party, our sniping party, until the last possible moment because we do not want it taken out by these uh, kind of secondary characters. And this is going to be a long kind of drawn out battle viewers I'm sorry but I need to be very conservative in this fight if you rush ahead without being cautious you will be taken out by the more powerful enemies so I really want to be careful I've lost this fight numerous times in the past and I don't want to have to redo it for this playthrough so slow and steady will win this race the thing to be very careful about is that these enemies are ranged attackers as we have our first reinforcement showing up. Let's uh, get some action up here to improve Levin's movement radius. And so they will attack you from up to three to four spaces away. And at this point it's still just one enemy, but they have some nasty little abilities too. You can use a ability that will lower your speed and also your movement radius. And that is the danger, because they will use that to keep you from being able to move towards them. And basically they'll keep sniping you from a distance. So that's why you want to be able to close the distance very quickly and attack them fast and furious and take them out. Because otherwise they will hit you with a Riptide ability that does massive damage. And if you let their stamina get low... Oh, come on. Can't reach them. Dang it. And they will use an ability called Poseidon, which is a water ability that does massive damage. So we're going to hopefully not have to deal with that in this battle. Oh, I can use Sprint again. That's interesting, it got upgraded to three at some point. Alright, well, that's nice. I'll take advantage of that. Okay, so let's continue moving towards these guys. Again, I'm gonna be deleting kind of repeat battles and basically I'm also going to be deleting battles in general because I want this fight to go a little bit quicker otherwise this fight can take you know 20 to 25 30 minutes depending on how slow you go and conservatively you attack these guys I'm trying to do it quickly but also safely Levin's party is not well designed to take these on all right, more backup. So I'm gonna be using my main party here for the most part. Ugh, always one space away. Okay, good, I didn't do much damage. That ability can be very dangerous. Ah, it's burn soul. Okay. Let's attack. Nice. So there will be no S rank for this battle, I am sure. These guys are hitting hard.
Yeah, yeah, keep coming. Okay. So, this is halfway. There's one more group of reinforcements that'll be coming with the boss-like character, which is basically the same. It's uh, another group of these water creatures way over there to the right. But it's uh, the most powerful of the groupings, and it also has three of them in one party. So very dangerous. And that is what my sniping group is for, to take out that character. Because these middle groups are the ones that are going to start doing the ensnare ability, which is going to lower my movement range. There it is. Which is going to make it very difficult for me to close the, uh, the range here to attack them. You're pretty much useless, Levin. Maybe I should have changed Levin's group into a, uh, another ranged group. Come on. Uh. Oh well. Bring it on. Ow. As long as it doesn't kill anybody, I should be okay. Oh, close. But yeah, I'm still not in range, of course. So I'm gonna have to get closer, and I'm gonna have to use a Gigetic. I did stock up on those before this battle. So I bought some through my range menu. Specifically, I bought some examines, which restore HP. And also some diagnose, which restore stamina, just in case I need them. <laughs> I'm terrified. To encounter these guys with Levin, unless I absolutely have to. Ugh, man, look at that. They get a line attack of water and then also a draining ability, and oh man, he's doing Poseidon. Not good. gonna hurt. Goodbye, plant. Now, Pokemon logic, the plant should have uh, resisted water, but it's purely based on your resistance stat, which those plants have very low RES stat. Hey, we can actually attack them. Okay. And Levin might be in range of this one. Look at that, he can actually do something. Can he beat it? Let's see. Yeah, should be able to. All right, nice job. You actually get some experience in this fight. Okay. Two thirds of the way. Now it gets tough. Let's slowly start making our way over towards them. <laughs> of course, they're just going to hang back and wait for me. That's fine. We've got all the time in the world. I'm going to use Levin as a uh, meat shield. Try to drain some of their abilities so that they can't use them on my main party. Hmm. Well, let's put them in a forest. Of course it's in range. They do not have any movement restrictions. They can move across all of this land without any problems. Here comes the baddie. The big one. Frickin' A. Oh man. Yeah, that almost killed everybody. 
It killed Novell, of course. Let's see if we can take this guy out. Oh yeah. Alright, last one to go, so let's bring out our sniping party. Put it back as far as possible to keep it from being attacked. Stop them. And uh, with Novell, I'm just gonna have him recover so that hopefully he can absorb a few attacks from this bad boss. Oh, oh, oh that killed everybody but Levin. And he's got two more of those left. Plus two Poseidons. Energize. And run. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll get the boost from the sea, so I guess that's worth it. And I do want to run my uh, stamina down a bit because uh, I want to be able to use my special abilities if necessary. Let's increase our range with our archer. And we'll just stay there. Ow. Hmm. How come I can't... I thought I had three energizes. I wonder if that was just when I had other party members there. You must lose it if uh, those party members are killed. Alright, well, run away. Go to the forest. And we'll heal. Just to make sure people can survive. Danette has incredibly low resistance. She only has like a 20% or a 20 stat, I should say. For her resistant ability. Turn 16. Ridiculous. Oh. Well, there goes Levin. Do it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to draw this guy in so that I can actually attack him. I don't think that's close enough. Let's see. Uh, of course not. One away. So let's use our last long shot. And run like heck. Please don't be in range of it. God dang it. I don't know. I guess I'll charge it. Okay. Can I move any closer? Thank goodness. Let's do this. Let's use raining shot. Come on, kill it. Or else I'm in trouble. Three archers, two saboteurs. Pretty good. Come on, don't miss. Please don't miss. Thank goodness. And the battle is over. Thank you. In the next episode, we will see what spoils we get from this battle and continue onward. As always, viewers, thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next time. So long.